So this is my MCPX here. Um, we've had a few pretty bad spills, so what I'm going to do today is tear it down in preparation of the complete Raycon Heli and Micro Heli upgrade and an HP05 Brussels motor. So obviously the most logical place to start would be with the blades. I'm just going to undo these two screws. and the blades. Now it's important when taking something like this apart to sort it. So what I'm going to do here is use Ziploc bags and sort things respectively to their purpose on the helicopter. So in this first bag here I'm going to put everything that connects the main rotors, the rotor head, the shaft, and of course the gear. So, sensibly enough, we'll start with that. Now I'm going to remove these connecting rods. They're difficult to get off, funny enough, because they seem to come off very easily in even the smallest crash. Those just pop off. And we'll put them in that same bag. Now for the blade grips. I'm going to leave them attached to the rotor head um, since I'll just be upgrading to a new rotor head. So we'll take out this one little screw here, which fastens the rotor head to the main shaft and then the rotor head will just pop right off so we have it here um, if you would like to take the blade grips off there's a little screw in there that you have to go after I don't know if you can see that but it's just a little guy um, anyways we'll put this one in the bag and move on now we're on to the swash plate. So for this swash plate, we must first remove the connecting arms. And the easiest way to do that is to sort of torque them off rather than just pull them. If you give them a little twist at one side, they pop right off. The swash plate isn't connected to the rotor head by anything special. So if we just pull the anti-rotation guide off, the swash plate will simply slide right off the top of this main shaft. So there you have our swash plate. Um, as you can see I've done the grommet mod to it. Um, so I'm just going to pull those grommets off in anticipation of my new parts arriving. I want to get them on and get flying as fast as possible. So now I'm going to put these grommets in the swash plate and the screw that was holding the rotor head into our rotor bag. As you can see, it's filling up nicely. Um, moving on, we have a collar that is holding on the main shaft. Um, and to avoid unscrewing that, all we have to do is simply pop the main gear off. But since I'm ordering a new shaft as well, we might as well remove the collar. The collar comes off the same way as the rotor head, just one simple screw. Sometimes you have to be careful when removing the screws because there's a lot of magnetic parts with all the servos and the little motors and they like to stick to them. So then what we do now is slide this collar off 
and then slide the main shaft out and there you have it now it looks like I pulled out a little bearing as well um, I ordered a new frame so I'm not sure if I'm going to need that bearing or not so I think to be safe I'll put the bearing back into the frame just so I don't lose it and I'm going to put the collar in our rotor head bag slide that bearing off of the shaft now's a good time to uh, inspect your main shaft um, sometimes these crack and the way you test it is just sort of apply pressure on it with your thumb and then rotate it and you'll see little cracks sort of start to show up if you cracked it, it looks like mine um, stayed in pretty good shape so that's good to remove the main gear you just want to stick your screwdriver in the end of the shaft and pop the gear off sometimes they get a little tricky this part you want to be rather careful with because well you don't want to replace the shaft so there we are this is our naked shaft I'll place it in the bag now that will be it for our rotor stuff uh, my landing gear is looking pretty haggard here so I'm just going to remove it it's only held on by the boom supports at this point um, this is the micro heli landing gear I believe no extreme production landing gear I'm sorry So for those of you that don't have it, simply ignore the process. I'm going to start a new bag here. This will be for frame components. Now moving on, I'll just take the canopy off and put it in with the landing gear. So now we have the bare frame, well not bare frame, but frame with servos and electronics and tail rotor and tail. I'd say it only makes sense to remove the tail now. Um, the first thing you want to do is look right in here and remove the little guy that is powering the tail motor. Now it's hold on, held on with a little bit of glue so you might have to pry at it just a tiny bit, but be careful. Now the tail boom just slides out of the end, and there you have it. I'm going to use this little fin for my future mod, so I just snapped it off. I had it super glued on because I knew I was just going to replace it soon. So, all this will go in our frame bag here. Um, one thing to sort of keep track of when you're doing this disassembly is your little bar linkages. They like to fall off. Um, in the third bag, I'm going to put all the electric and servo components. So, just for the time being, I'll take off all the little connecting rods. Um, the actual collective connecting rod, you cannot remove it until you remove the servo from the frame. So we'll do that now. We simply take these two screws out. And unplug the servo here. This is a good use for a flathead screwdriver. Just give it a little pry, but be careful. If you go side to side, you can just wiggle it out.
And then you can slide that guy out there. And there you have your collective servo. Although in reality, collective uses all three servos. So I'm going to take the other bearing out of this frame, which is on top. Just for kicks and giggles, put a screwdriver in, pop it out, make sure you don't bend it. Put that in my frame bag. Now we're going to move the right aileron servo. Same process as the collective one, and I believe these actually are all the same generic servo. Could be wrong though. I'm no pro. Again, just two screws holding it in. Having a magnetic screwdriver in this process is an absolute godsend. Now it looks like this servo wire is being blocked by the wire for the left aileron servo, so we'll go ahead and remove that. Same thing, one screw, two screw. These ones are sticking to the motor. So now that I have that servo, I'm going to come in with my flathead again. And I will remove the plugs from the 3 in 1. And that's it for my servos. There you go. Now the time has come to remove the 3 in 1 board. First, what we must do is remove the power for the main motor. Simple one plug operation. Um, and now there's two screws holding the 3 in 1 on there right in the middle. This part is very important. You don't actually touch any of the circuitry with your screwdriver. Now these screws are fairly unique because they have a little washer on them that insulates them. From the three and one. Now, since these are special screws, I'm going to screw them back in the frame so I don't forget them. All right. Now we must remove the main motor. So, two simple screws in the bottom. We will unthread those. These are unique to the helicopter, so you can't go mix and match them like the servo screws in it. Then the motor is just a simple push, and it will slide right out. Um, sometimes what I notice is that you get little things stuck on your motor, little metal pieces, um, and they can actually gum it up. So there it is, the main motor. Um, this one I'm going to put in the frame bag simply because of its magnetic nature. And the three in one unit. Um, I'm going to store this by wrapping the cord around it once and then wrapping a rubber band, double wrapping a rubber band around it. Um, and this will do a well enough job from insulating it from the other parts. So that will be real nice. Now the two main motor screws, it's important that we don't lose those. So. I'm just going to screw them back into the frame.
These can be kind of tricky. There we are. This is our stock frame. Um, the main reason I replaced is because I busted the two bottom pieces out. And now I'll put this in the frame bag with everything else. And that is it. As you can see, we have completely disassembled this MCPX. We have one bag with all our frame components, one bag with all the rotor components, and a third bag with all the electrical components. So they're all nicely sorted. And when my brushless motor comes in the mail this week, it'll be very simple to set it all up.